politics as they unfold. Well, coming up, life inside a country where multiculturalism has run amok. You're now branded racist, Islamophobic or neo-Nazi if you speak out against the protected species, Islam and Muslims. The way we're going, we're going to be taken back to the stoning age. We'll visit the nation where this is happening next. Well, in the past, the Battle of Britain, Britain withstood deadly attacks from the Nazis and in generations prior to the Spanish Armada. But now it faces an assault from the enemies within. Political correctness and multiculturalism. Dale Hurd has the amazing story from London. Britain's top judge says the nation should allow Islamic Sharia law. The head of the Church of England said the same thing. Police dogs might have to wear booties when they search Muslim homes to avoid offending Muslims who believe dogs are unclean. And Britain's Home Secretary has decided that Islamic terrorism should be renamed anti-Islamic activity. There is a real fear of Islam in Britain that is far different than in America. And the headlines here sometimes make it look as if capitulation to Islam is inevitable. It's somewhat astonishing that in a nation of 60 million people, a couple million Muslims could cause so much concern. Critics of the government say that's because Britain's politically correct leadership has been so slow to tackle this problem head on. So-called hate speech is illegal in Britain, but it depends on who is doing the hating. When these British citizens protested the Mohammed cartoons at the Danish Embassy in London in 2006, they expressed their allegiance to terrorists. They called for beheadings and nuclear attacks. British police arrested no one until there was a public uproar. Compare that to when a British news program exposed violent rhetoric in local mosques. British police initially decided to charge not the radical imams who were promoting violence and bigotry, but the news program that did the report for allegedly stirring up racial hatred. But the wake-up calls over political correctness have been getting more frequent and more horrific. It could be argued that Britain's commitment to ethnic diversity cost this woman her life. Banaz Mahmoud's family tried repeatedly to kill her because she left an arranged marriage and allegedly stained the family honor. Banaz recorded this video account from a hospital bed the first time her family tried to kill her. She also went to British police several times asking for help, but they ignored her because police thought they should respect ethnic diversity and not get involved. Banaz was finally murdered by her father and uncle stuffed into a suitcase and buried in this backyard. A surge in honor violence is only one result of the government's policy of respecting ethnic diversity and bowing to Islam. Gina Khan is a national spokeswoman against honor violence and Islamic radicalism. She left an arranged marriage and because she speaks out against radical Islam, she's been forced to move to a secret location. You're at risk if you speak out. You can be attacked. I'm aware of that. But there comes a time when silence becomes a sin. A guilt. I spoke out because I believe that the people in the community that I moved out of are in denial about jihadism, yet it's happening all under their noses. In fact, I think people know what's happening. When former drug dealer and now born-again Christian Paul Ray wrote in his blog that the Muslim drug gangs in his hometown of Luton were savages, he was arrested on suspicion of a hate crime. It's okay for the Muslims to do what they're doing um, and no one arrests them. But then if we start saying and disagreeing with what's actually happening, you know, we're breaching community cohesion and um, we get arrested for it. It's just how things are now in this country. If we speak out or say anything against the protected species, Islam and Muslims. Paul Ray fled Britain after this interview because of threats against his life from Muslim gangs. Whole sections of Britain are now considered dangerous no-go zones for non-Muslims. Sally McNamara is at the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation. When you have a government who is so hampered by political correctness that they're unwilling to assert national values of tolerance, of rule of law, of human rights and women's rights and that sort of thing, then you're creating mixed messages where you're saying the extremists can flourish. We have a hornet's nest of Islamic extremism in Britain, which we are trying to combat on a counter-terrorism and counter-radicalization. Stephen Gash helps lead a grassroots group called SIO, Stop the Islamization of Europe, which has a chapter in Britain. 
they're discriminating against the majority people in Europe now in favour of the Islamists and Muslims. And uh, the way we're going, we're going to be taken back to the stoning age. So you're now branded racist, Islamophobic or neo-Nazi if you speak out against Islam. But at least one study shows that most British Muslims don't want Sharia law. A lot of Muslims came here to escape it. Yet it might be foisted on them anyway by political leaders. Wherever there is this same sort of ideology and mindset, there's now more polygamy in our communities, there's more domestic violence in our communities, there's more forced marriages, and there are more honour killings now. It's clear that multiculturalism and political correctness have backfired badly. The hardcore Islamists have not been assimilated into society. But Britain's confidence in democracy and Christian civilization have been seriously weakened. Dale heard CBN News, London. Thanks, Dale. Terry, that's so alarming and it just grieves you because the, the British have such great traditions of yes. freedom and to see, actually, they were targeted. The Muslims targeted Britain. They literally wanted to take Britain over. And if the Brits just hold steady and let it happen, then they're going to, these uh, the small minorities are going to succeed. But they, there's, there's a clear, if I can use the term plot, plan, whatever, to take that country over. I think what's disturbing about it is you s clearly can see what's happened. Oh. What you can't see is that there's any kind of a, of a plan to counter that in place. When the British have lost their faith in Christianity, then they're wide open to anything to come in. And unless you're unavowedly Christian, you, you're going to be uh, subject and submissive to so many things. But just think of all these Muslims who came to Britain to get away from Sharia, and now the Archbishop of Canterbury and others are saying, well, we might be having Sharia. Well, who in the world wants to have Sharia in a modern European country? But that's going to be forced on people. Oh, well, wake up! Smell.